Hi, it's Rob Moore here. Now, uh, I used to think that you could hide away from rejection, you know, i.e. you could get yourself into a comfortable place where you're never going to get rejected anymore. I was completely naive. I was wrong about that. The reality of rejection is it's a daily practice, i.e. you're going to get rejected every single day. And if you're not getting rejected every single day, then you're not going out of the house every single day. You're not getting yourself seen every single day. Um, the thing with rejection is, you know, there are some people that say, oh, yeah, reject me. I love it. Well, bullshit. It's like, I don't love being rejected. I hate it. Who likes being rejected? No one likes being rejected. But what I think you can do is build a good resilience so that you shorten the time in which your inner ego and chimp and child goes, ah! uh, and, and um, manage your mind better to dance with the rejection. Uh, and I would say yesterday I probably got rejected 10, maybe 15 times. Uh, and I know if that had happened 11 years ago, um, I'd have been upset, angry. I'd probably be unconsciously retaliating and taking it out on other people. I'd become a victim. I would hide away. I would um, get my message, my work, me out less to the world. If my art ever got rejected when I was an artist, I, I would show my work less. I think I entered my art into a competition um, maybe twice. And when it didn't win both times, I just immediately took that that was shit. Uh, and I never entered it into a competition anymore. When the reality is, I probably need, it's just a numbers game, isn't it? I probably need to get my art out to 10, 100 competitions if I've got any chance of winning any. So something else about rejection is it's never about you. And sometimes that's hard because, you, you know, I think sometimes when people reject you, they like to um, put it in a pipe and make you smoke it. You know, like that, most people, when they reject you, they're not polite. They're not elegant about it. They're not thinking about how you feel. They're just reacting emotionally themselves. So they're like, oh, well, you did this and I don't like this and piss off and don't do this and go away here and, and whatever else. But that's not you. That's them. That is their emotional reaction to a situation. Uh, and um, when they reject you, they don't reject you. They reject what you said, what you did. Um, you know, their own individual circumstances and situations. So whilst I, I can't sit here and say love rejection because I still don't love rejection, I can sit here and say rejection isn't, is rarely ever about you uh, and more often about where they are at. It's not about rejecting you as a person. You know, it's not that you're not good enough. It's that they didn't want the thing, like the thing, weren't in the space, the pitch was wrong, the timing of the pitch was wrong, the approach to the pitch is wrong. Now, the thing is, if you don't get rejection, you don't get feedback. Um, and you don't understand how to pr improve your products, your pitches, your approaches, and everything else that you're trying to get out to the world. So rejection is good in that sense, that it makes you stronger, more resilient, but it makes you smarter, and it makes your products and services you know, you know, more relevant to the market. I mean, if you think about it, your products and services are hopefully getting better and better and better. Uh, for them to get better, they need to be rejected a lot so that you can know what to improve, to tweak, to feed back. And it's quite funny, actually, because um, I've been doing this for, for many years now after my art days where I didn't dare do it. Um, it was like, you know, reject me and, and, and everything about my who I am is put into question. Um, but I'll now go and put book titles and book covers up for for feedback. And sometimes people are like, oh, look, Rob, I'm really sorry, but you know, I, I don't like it. And I'm like, no, it's all right. You don't have to be sorry. You're not rejecting me. You're rejecting the book cover. And it's not about me. It's about you. It's how you feel about the book cover. So you don't have to apologize to me. You know, I'm not that much of a wimp. I used to be. I'm not so much anymore. So let's summarize then some important things about rejection. Rejection is a daily practice. You should be getting rejected every day. You need to put yourself in a position where you're getting rejected every day. And the good thing about that is you get to practice how you deal with rejection. Now, if you don't react to rejection emotionally and you just deal with rejection logically, then you're going to win a lot more in business and life. Um, and so there's been some time, even yesterday, there's probably five or six times where I something about me or my company was rejected. And, you know, for that nanosecond, the, the chimp who got bullied when I was a young kid and didn't get the love I wanted and was overweight. Isn't it funny how when you get rejected, you're not re not reacting to the situation. Your whole life and all the baggage and the shit, like, you know, there's ever been just comes out like a colonic irrigation. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. They weren't rejecting that. They didn't mean to 
pick this massive scab your whole life, but that's what you do. That's what happens, and it, and it all brings up to surface. So the first thing you've got to do is, there's nothing to do with what happened to me when I was nine. Get over it. And then just realize it's a situation. And every time you get rejected, you get to practice getting better at it. Now, in the past, when I'd get rejected, I'd get emotional, and I'd shut a door. I'd lose a relationship. I'd take it personally. But, but I think it's really wise to just keep doors open. If someone rejects doing something with you, say, no problem, um, but maybe we'll keep the door open. Or if they push you away, um, you don't react to them. Just, you know, like I said, just keep trying to maintain the relationships because who knows in the, in the future, um, you know, things might come back to you. So don't shut all the doors by reacting emotionally. Now, uh, I interviewed Doug Abansky, who um, was in the social network, the film, uh, and produced um, as many of Gary Oldman's films. He, in fact, he's Gary Oldman's business partner. Uh, and I was really inspired by how he just didn't really seem bothered about rejection. He'd have an idea and he's like, right, I'm just going to do it and do it. Uh, he, um, he was the guy that um, instrumented Paul Hogan being on the Foster's adverts, sold so many millions, billions of cans of Foster's, I don't know, that they actually couldn't, uh, they had to get rid of the, um, to get rid of him from the adverts because they ran out of beer. He got Gary Oldman doing the Darkest Hour film. And he said for three years, Gary Oldman didn't want to do it. Um, but he knew he wanted Gary Oldman to do it. And it was perfect for Gary. Uh, and every time Gary Oldman said, I don't want to do it, you know, Doug wasn't going, oh, you know, you're rejecting me. Oh, poor me in my life. Oh. He just knew that that was, he was respectful that that was just his, you know, opinion, his stuff, his, where he was at in, in that time. And it just every now and again, just keep reopening that door. Did the same with Paul Hogan. Paul Hogan didn't want to go and do a load of adverts. He persuaded Paul Hogan to come back and do a load of, you know, do adverts, you know, to get to build his brand out there. So really, rejection is, OK, fine. Thanks for the feedback. What can I learn? OK, not now, because a no is only a no today. A no is not a no forever. And Dave's just said that. That's synchronicity there with us, Dave. A no is only a no today. It's not a no for never. Tomorrow is another day. But there are some people who go, oh, yeah, but, yeah, that's fine. Just go out there. Be relentless. No, sometimes I remember in the early years when I was reading all these rejection books, like reject me. I love it. And, and I was trying to, you know, rhino skin and all that. And I'd bug the shit out of people. Oh, and I love rejection. Bug, but, and in the end, they're like, Rob, will you just fuck off? I've had enough of you. Like, delete me from all social media. Get a restraining order on me and don't want to know me for the rest of my life. So, you know, we don't want to be too sort of like, oh, I love, you know, like persistent about it. There's a balance, isn't there? I mean, Doug said with, you know, Gary Oldman and Paul Hogan, he said, look, you know, I'm not going to push these guys every day. I have to respect where they're at and how they're feeling. So I've got to be smart with this. I've got to pick my timing. So, yeah, there's another side to this where you're too persistent and too, too relentless. And, oh, well, I love rejection. But, but you're just shutting all the doors of opportunities. Anyway, I think that's enough for a rainy Friday morning. Go out there, have a great day. Go and get rejected lots. Don't take rejection personally. Always learn from rejection. They're rejecting the thing, not you. Improve that thing. Uh, get yourself out there to the world more. Uh, bring more rejection into your life. Uh, and I think you'll have a better, more successful life. And you just build this resilience. You, you know, you build this. It's not that you shouldn't care what other people think, but you shouldn't overly care what other people think. Thanks for listening, watching, and remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.